and we're here with the DL Community Calendar, and I'm here with Lillian Nibel. Hi there. Hi. She didn't want to be on today, but look at her. What a good sport, right? <laughs> do what you got to do. <laughs> and look at and, and off stage, you're definitely not on. No. <laughs> no. Okay. So um, she didn't want to be on because she didn't like the camera, but you do want to be on because you have a cool event coming up. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So there's no shyness about wanting to promote that. And I've heard good things about this Cabin Fever Supper. So coming up uh, at Great Lutheran Church, Saturday, March 7th, from 4 to 7 p.m. Tell me a little bit about it because it's a big deal. Uh, yes, we've been having this um, annual um, supper for years, um, and we generally have between four and 500 people show for this. So it's really a big deal. Um, and um, I encourage people to come because it's a lot of fun. You see people that maybe you haven't seen in years. I mean, it's really a nice social event too. So um, we encourage everybody to come. Um, it helps get people out of the house. Um, winter gets long. It's it, everybody's dying to get out and socialize a little bit more. So it's really fun. Great. Yeah, that's true. Like it says, come out of hibernation and indulge in good food. It's true. We all get a little reclusey, little, you know, hovelled into our little places, sure. and we need to get out and sure. and warm and wonderful food. Tell me about the food you're telling me about before we start. <clears throat> okay, we have. It'll consist of uh, meatballs and gravy. Uh, mashed potatoes, corn, buns, coleslaw, pickles, desserts, beverages, and um, just a side note here, all of this food is made from scratch. We are actual, we actually make every single meatball, wow. every drop of gravy, every potato, <laughs> everything. So Wow, and that's not common nowadays people are opening cans and taking something out of the freezer and it's already processed so wow that that sounds lovely and lefsa yes we're gonna have lefsa too now we had oh, through the years i'm sure everyone will remember bertha anderson she used to be at our church too she's now moved to west fargo um, and we miss her terribly but she used to be the chief lefsa maker there I, and I remember Bertha. She was fun, boy. She could f really put out the lefsa, and it was delicious. But because our lefsa makers are either gone or moved away or whatever else, um, we are purchasing our lefsa this year. So, But it is delicious lefsa. Oh, I bet. And so it's a fundraiser, right? It is. It's a fundraiser for Great Lutheran Church. So adults are 10. Kids four to ten are five, and kids three and under are free. Correct. 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 Okay. And you're located at two thirteen Roosevelt Avenue in Detroit Lakes. Again, it's Saturday, March seventh, from four to seven. Um, Grace Lutheran Church. Is there anything else you want people to know? What does the money go for for this? Um, we do lots of donation to local charities. Um, uh, I'm not real sure what, what our split is going to be this time. Usually we're at least 10%. Most of the time it's about 15 or 20 that we donate to a local charity. And then the rest, of course, goes for our, our church repairs and things of that nature, you right. know, just to keep the church going. So um, I think it's going to be a really good thing. Uh, a lot of times we do now, this month is also Grace's month to work at the food pantry. We do the whole month of March oh. at the food pantry. So that most likely will be part of where our, our contribution will go. We do camps. We send ki kid, disadvantaged kids to camp um, every year. We we do a lot. We go um, Lutheran World Relief. We do lots of things. Mary's Place, Compassion House, uh, Lakes Crisis Center. Those are all places that we donate to. So Wonderful. All right, perfect. Again, it's Cabin Fever Supper with Grace Lutheran Church as a fundraiser. Um, Saturday, March 7th, 4 to 7 p.m. Um, Left some meatballs and gravy, mashed potatoes, corn, desserts, all homemade. Um, 
Except for the left sub, but that's really good, you know. It yeah, is. It's yep. Good. And then um, it's just it's a fundraiser. Adults are ten, kids four and ten are five, and kids three and under are free. So hope you can join at Grace Lutheran Church on March seventh. And thanks for coming in, Lillian. Oh, thank you for yeah. having me. Yeah. All right, and we'll be back with more DL Community Calendar right after this. Welcome back to the DL Community Calendar, and joining me today is Erica Gilsdorf, and you've been a part of a really fun project called What Fuels You, an electric road trip. So tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, thank you. So we are, I know it's weird, I was just the host on DL Community Calendar, but now I'm the guest. So here at Layton Broadcasting, our division is LB Video Productions, we have led a project called um, the Electric Road Trip. It's What Fuels You, an Electric Road Trip. So we traveled all through Minnesota and um, covered stories on electric vehicles, charging stations, but also some really cool, fun stories. Like um, we hit a, we hit Peace Coffee, that one air, is airing. We um, hit a brewery, um, I talked to a meteorologist, Paul Douglas. We just, farmers, it was really fun. So tell me a little bit about the trip and specifically about electric vehicles and, and how the state and, and a lot of businesses in Minnesota are really adopting an electric way of life. Right, right. So um, the, this was inspired because we don't have a lot of um, means to use EVs in our area because we're more rural. And there's a lot of work going towards that. So we are going, did you know we're getting an EV charging station here? I didn't. We are. Yeah, we're getting an EV charging station, um, I think in the fall. It could be sooner than that. But um, that's really exciting because one of the reasons I can't have an EV, an electric vehicle, is because there's no place to charge it. So the clear, the 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 closest one I think is in Fergus Falls right now. So we um, wanted to showcase how EVs are coming into rural areas and charging stations. And part of this trip was also that it's a huge tourism attraction because um, like we stopped at Moose Lake. Have you ever stopped at Moose Lake Mm -hmm. before? No, either have I. And yet I've traveled that area to Duluth, uh, you know, numbers of areas, but we, a number of times, but we went a different route. And um, when we were going to Bemidji, I mean, and to that area and, and we stopped and we had pie and we had um, dinner or snacks. And then another time we stopped and had dinner. So at all these little places, you get charged and you can, you know, enjoy the town and see something. And we put it on social media and everybody's like, oh, I've been, you know, Moose Lake and, you know, different things like that. So we're going to show a clip. But before we do that, I've got a question because we've got a, my family's got a lake place up near Bemidji and there's a charging station there. And I see it um, as we drive by once in a while. And I've always wondered, is there a cost to charge your electric vehicle, or do you, or is it free electricity? Do you just pull up and plug in, or do you swipe a credit card? How does it work? Yeah, yeah. We have on our series, um, you can go to at what fuels you USA. Um, we have a whole series on charging and 101 and what they explain. But there's all, and I'm learning too, which I think is so cool, because we're at the cutting edge of um like we don't know what these even look like, some of us. Like I didn't even know what they look like. And now pretty soon, within six months, you're going to know what a charging station looks like. People are going to know how they work. But um, I didn't know either when he just explained to us a couple months ago. There's different um, companies, like ChargePoint is one that we came across a lot. And you have a card and you buy a card and then you go and you swipe it and then you get charged on your card. So it's like a credit card. And it beeps and then you plug in and it charges. And like a charge for us um, was like $12 one time for, there's fast chargers and then there's level twos. So when we went to some of the fast charging ones, um, I think that one was like 12 or $15, but you know, it depends on how much you're charging and for how long and all that kind of stuff. But um, we really, we really had a good experience learning how, um, like we went to the jackpot casino, plugged in overnight, went to the casino, had dinner, and then in the morning our cars, you know, charged. I mean, it's actually finished charging at like 2 in the morning, but we just, you know, left it there. Same thing happened with um, Canal Park. Uh, we stayed at Canal Park in Duluth and um, kept it overnight. But then when we were on the road, we would go to some fast chargers so we could just stop, have some pie, charge it up, and then move on. So it was really cool. So your answer is they have different companies and they have apps that you can just go on and see who's using the charger, how long they've been on, if it's vacant. I mean, it's so easy. It's so slick. Lots to learn with electric vehicles, and uh, this road trip certainly is helping us to learn about EVs. Let's roll one of those clips right now. What fuels you? Coffee, coffee, coffee! I'm Lee Wallace, I'm the Queen Bean at Peace Coffee, and we are in it for good. 
I spilled on myself. <laughs> Everything about Peace Coffee is just cool. Their name, their logo, their socks, their staff, the way they deliver their coffee by bicycle. Are you taking applications? But it goes much deeper than all of that, even deeper than the fact that their roasting plant has geothermal heat, skylights for natural light, solar panels, and native prairies surrounding the outside to prevent rainwater runoff. So we also have compostable products like our coffee cups. And I think the biggest thing that's at the heart of what we do is that all of our coffee is organic. And that is so, so important to coffee growing communities, to building climate resiliency in coffee growing communities. And it's so, so important to make sure that we preserve that rainforest canopy that's serving as a carbon sink. We roast fair trade and organic coffee. It's at the heart of what we do. They buy their coffee from over 12 different countries and over 20 different growing organizations. When we originally got involved in the business, we went deep immediately into coffee farming and got to understand the realities of what's going on on the ground for coffee farmers. And one of the emerging threats over the past several years has been the recognition that climate change is hitting coffee growing communities hard. If you're wanting to fill your cup in more than one way, buying organic is a big perk. Organic coffee is incredibly important. Coffee is naturally a shade-loving plant, and it's only when it's exposed to bright sunlight and when the forest canopy is gone do you have to put a lot of uh, chemical inputs, fertilizers, things like that. So when you're buying organic coffee, you know that the forest canopy has been left intact. And if you think about all of the forests we have growing around the equator, those are incredible carbon sinks. And Lee's sticking true to their motto, in it for good. You know, when I was younger, I used to want to change the world, and now I want to change my street corner, and then I want to change the street corner in coffee-growing communities. Um, but, you know, I, I just, I really believe that, that you can do the right thing and be a good person and still come out ahead in the world, and that's why I do this. Peace out, Peace Coffee. Like we said, you're one cool coffee co. So it's not just electric vehicles that the electric road trip is focusing on. It, it's businesses and, and other community members that are focusing on uh, renewable energy and things that will help the environment as well, isn't it? Right. Yes. Well said. Thanks. <laughs> um, yeah. So we talk, like I said, with Peace Coffee and the Canal Park Brewery. We talked to a chicken farmer and um, we talked to a farmer, uh, Sto Stony Creek Farm down in um southern in the southern part of the state and what they're doing with regenerative ag and it was just really fun because the stories are fun we wanted um to address what people are doing but in a fun inspiring way versus um you know like hey we all got to do something or we're gonna die you know we you, i wanted people to be inspired to take action because they can see what other people are doing in their own corner of the world and their own scope of influence and making a difference and they are really making a difference. And But they're fun. They're fun stories. So I invite everybody to watch them. So we're at, um, it's at What Fuels You USA. And we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, you can go to our YouTube channel. Just Google What Fuels You USA. And you'll see all our videos. And then we're encouraging people to follow, share, um, like us, um, subscribe. Because that's what's going to help us to tell more, more stories. And we have other stories we want to tell in Minnesota, but also... Um, other states are asking us to come to, you know, Colorado, California to come to their state because they, uh, people really like the series. Awesome project. Thank you for your yeah. time, Erica. That's all the time we have today on the Detroit Lakes Community Calendar. If you'd like your event on the next edition of the DL Community Calendar, give Abby a call at 847-5624.